Uh, Dan is also part of our leadership team and manages with Anita the um, workshop committee for SCORE. All right, so now I'm gonna get started. We'll talk a little bit more about SCORE for a minute. I just wanted to let you know what SCORE is. Um, and for those of you that are new to SCORE, we are the largest network of small business volunteers and mentors throughout the entire nation. There are about 12,000 volunteers in about 250 chapters around the country doing what we do. And you'll see that everything that we do is free and it is pretty much unlimited. Uh, we have wonderful resources available for you um, online as well as what we do live and with our mentoring and the education programs that we put together on um, that kind of value, that's what SCORE is. And, and our mission for all intents and purposes is very, very simple. Our mission is to foster small, vibrant business communities through mentoring and education. Now here in Cleveland, that um, covers seven counties. There are also uh, SCORE branches in Canton and Akron and um, in uh, other areas as well. And so um, SCORE is free to everyone. Um, what is also good is it scores for everyone. Okay, you know, um, black entrepreneurs, Hispanic, women, veteran entrepreneurs, if you go to our website, you will see that there are areas very specific for, for, for you all, almost anywhere in, for any kind of diverse group that's out there. We're, we're very, very um, uh, much in favor of how to be as diverse as we can. And, and in fact, our membership in SCORE is becoming more and more diverse. We want to look like the clients that we serve um, in terms of our mentoring capabilities. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about SCORE Cleveland because um, we are a special chapter. We were chapter of the year this past year. And out of the 250 chapters, we are the number one chapter in the entire country. Um, we started about 227 new businesses, um, and, and these, are, these are surveys that go out independent of SCORE uh, through PricewaterhouseCooper. Um, we created about 1900, uh, 919 jobs, I'm sorry, and we provided almost a total of 9,000 chapters, I'm sorry, 9,000 uh, chapter services, which means that um, chapter services are comprised of anybody that takes a workshop, anybody that is mentored by us, or anybody that takes a national workshop, and that's tracked. We have, we have key performance indicators that we have to live with, um, part of which is to talk to the Small Business Administration about our success, as well as the federal government. And we are in part funded by the federal government, just um, Part of, part of the funding that we get comes through the SBA and the federal government. You can see that our branch or our chapter is located in the seven counties around the lake. Uh, so Cuyahoga, L Lake, Lorraine, uh, Geauga, Ashtabula, Huron, and Erie counties. And we work very closely with under served areas to make sure that they have the ability to get the same type of mentoring as anybody else throughout these counties. Um, we have a, a code of ethics that we all have to live by. So in short, basically we cannot do any business with you that would line our own pockets. We can't divulge any information to anybody that you give us. Um, and for all intents and purposes, we have to sign this code of ethics every year in order to be considered um, a mentor with SCORE. So that's really important to us. And we just cannot make money on anything you do. So the information that you um, provide to us is really important. And I mentioned the Small Business Administration. We are a resource partner of the SBA and they in part are helping us with our funding. And that is one of the reasons why we are able to do everything that we do for free. So again, I wanna welcome everybody. The last thing I wanted to show you is our brand new website. 
um, to show you how you can find a local mentor. And you will find that as we go through this presentation, it's going to be very important for you to be able to expand what it is that you want to work on within your own business plan by working with a mentor that can actually help you work through the various aspects of putting together your plans. So um, I just wanna show this very quickly. And you can go and request a local mentor. If you hit that, you will be brought to a screen that gives us some basic information about you and you tell us what you're looking for up to and including the industry that you think that you're in and areas of help that you want. And the way this works is you would submit this and based on your zip code, um, you will be assigned a mentor through a chapter that is the closest to you. And for the most part, anybody that goes in here is probably going to be working with the Cleveland SCORE um, branch. And so what will happen is our client assignment team will take the information and try to match you up with a mentor that most closely comes to what it is that you need in terms of experience and help. And um, the other unique thing about SCORE is that the other 12,000 members that we have in SCORE, in one way or another, very likely, if we don't have the experience here in Cleveland, have the experience that we need. We've got people that have had very storied careers and work in most, multiple industries and so have the ability to work with you on most of what you might be considering. The other thing I wanted to show you is, um, you can find a mentor, you can take a workshop. This will bring you to our local chapter. Um, there's some national information available out here as well. Um, you know, Become a volunteer. If you all are interested in, in working with SCORE, I'd uh, be happy to have you do that. Find your mentor, uh, take a workshop. And then there are some things here that are very helpful for you to get started to plan and start, starting your, your business. Um, and so there's a lot of great resources and tools and um, templates out there that are available for you um, through our uh, website. So now I wanna talk a little bit about simple steps. I'll get it set up and then, and, and then move right into it. So um, I'm gonna be as cognizant of time as I can. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, and uh, we'll try and answer those as we go along or toward the end. <clears throat> so bear with us. So simple steps for starting your business. We're going to be talking about the startup basics. So this is going to be an overview. Um, and then over the next couple of weeks, we'll be getting into much more detail. Um, one of the things that um, um, you want to understand is that this is hands-on. And in order for you to take full advantage, I'm going to give you some homework, which we will do during the course of the five weeks. And um, these will be the things that you need to start your planning and to um, understand your business and where you're going and understand how to articulate what it is that you're trying to achieve with your business. So, you know what, when you do these plans, you know, you want to look to see if your, if your idea is potentially going to work. Are you going to compare it against your competitors? Um, you're going to look to see if your idea is viable, but even if it isn't, the things that you will learn over the next five weeks will help you to figure out what it is in terms of an idea that could potentially work for you. And, you know, whether the idea is getting it up and running to bootstrap it or to go out and find funding, um, we will talk about that over the course of the next five weeks. So here's how it sets up. Here's our roadmap. Today, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about startup basics. Next week, Sarah is going to be taking you through the session on business concepts. And this is where having the um, resources available through the library um, and the databases that are available will come in great hand, and will be very handy for you. Um, and session number three is going to be marketing and a marketing plan. Uh, we'll get into that. We're actually going to be working with a case study called Ann's Nursery which you probably have gotten already. I know that Anita had sent out links to the handouts 
uh, for this week. And then we'll do that again next week for each session. We'll send out the handouts in advance so that you then can take those handouts and work either the homework side of it or um, Anne's nursery is one that went out today. You should be able to read that. It's a, it's a case study and it's really set up very well in that you should be able to learn a lot about your own business ideas um, by looking at that and what directions you should be going in. And then the marketing plan, which will also work with Anne's nursery. Um, and then we're actually gonna be going through some financial planning um, in, in, in a way that, you know, um, hopefully will make sense to all of you. But the, the thing to keep in the back of your mind with all of these is that there are mentors available that are experienced and can help you. So if you are working on your financial planning and you don't have the access or understand the tools that are available for you, a mentor can easily help you. Okay, and then funding sources, and Ray is on this call, Ray Grace, through the SBA. Um, so we're gonna be talking about banking. Um, and I'll, I'll bring that up a little bit today, um, but not very much. Again, today is going to be a fairly um, um, high uh, 40,000 foot view. Um, so this is kind of what you're gonna look at today. We're gonna very briefly talk about myths and realities of entrepreneurship. You know, um, critical success factors that you need to know, um, some of your options in terms of the types of businesses that are out there that you could consider, um, components of business ownership a little bit. Um, we call this making it legal, but I'm just going to go through some of the legal entities of actual business setups. And then we'll talk very, very briefly about cash and funding. Um, that's really going to come into the final um, session and a little bit about, I'll just go through an outline on some business planning basics. So that's where we are. So, so far, it looks like I have two questions. So let me just see what those are. Um, how can I receive the handouts after the call? Um, if you would send me a note, an email to robert.cohen, C-O-H-E-N, at scorevolunteer.org. Somewhere or another between now and next week, we'll make sure that you get those. Um, and the handouts will go out to each, um, each attendee prior to the, um, to, prior to the actual session. It'll go out with your reminder that the session has happened. All right, um, I think that's it for the moment. So, here's some, here's some myths and some realities. All I need is a, good idea, you know, to, to be a successful entrepreneur, um, you know, I'm, without insulting anybody's, ten, uh, you know, intelligence, I, you know, I'm just going to say, hey, that's probably out and out myth. You do need a good idea. But you need a lot more than just a good idea. We'll go through some of those things. You know, if you go out on your own, you won't have to work so hard. Well, very few types of businesses that you might go out on your own would require less work than what you're currently doing, either within the job you have or within the business that you are already part of. So, you know, I think that that's also a myth. Um, I think you'll actually be working a lot harder. You will be wearing more hats and you will be um, um, putting in more time and you'll be thinking about what you're doing in your business on a constant basis. So. Um, you'll be able to deduct everything, you know, on your taxes. So, no, that's not the case. Um, the, you know, there are some things that you can deduct expense-wise. One of the things that I would highly recommend that you do is if you are beginning a business, you in some way or another become part of, you know, um, work with an accountant or somebody that can actually walk you through um, the legalities of what you need to do in the way of um, taxes and some of the things that go along with that. So uh, if you work independently, you won't have to report to a boss. You know, I've, I've done that and found that you, you've got more bosses now than you would have had if you were working in a company, that now your, your clients are your bosses, your vendors are your bosses one way or another, and, you know, your um, people that you are, are beholden to, your employees are your bosses one way or another. That's part of business ownership. You know, um, business owners get to do the work and then, you know, uh, that they find interesting and, and that's it. No, you wear all the hats and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then you know, be self-employed. 
you will be limited in what you can achieve um, by working alone. And you know what? That's not true. Um, there are a lot of people that have an individual business that they do very well with. And, you know, the last thing you want to do is, is be working alone, but you should be able to be working with other people as well. So um, one thing I just wanted to show you is that, you know, business ownership and success is hard to come by. And if you plan for it right, you stand a much better chance of setting that business up and growing it and making it work. But you can see by this that, you know, within five years, about half of the businesses that start up do fail. And beyond that, sometimes even more so. And with the way things have gone with the pandemic, although, you know, we're coming out, hopefully coming out of the other side of it to a certain extent, um, that made that even probably a little bit worse in terms of data than what you're looking at right here, because a lot of businesses failed, many of which had just started up during that period of time. So let's talk about some characteristics of a successful entrepreneur. And you know, you wouldn't be on this call if you didn't think that you had those qualities. So I'm going to go through them very quickly and not really spend much time on them. You know, work work ethic is really important. I mentioned that, you know, you're going to be working harder. Ability to, to manage and multitask, I think that's really important. A lot of entrepreneurs, you know, are very random thinkers and, and you know, think about all kinds of different ideas, but don't have the wherewithal to really pin those down and multitask in and actually linearly think through each of those ideas. We can talk about that a little bit later as well. Um, I think what it really takes is to have the experience and or the education in the field that you choose. You know, just because you like food doesn't make you a restaurateur. Just because you have a, a camera doesn't make you a photographer. Um, so, you know, I'm oversimplifying it, but um, one thing that you will find, and I'm sure Ray will talk about this, is that when you put together your business and your business plan, and if you are looking for funding, your funders are gonna to wanna to know what your experience is in, in that field. Now, there are some possibilities you can work in some fields that don't require any experience, but very likely those are going to be franchises. We'll talk about franchises in a few minutes. You know, um, effective time management, I don't need to go into that in any detail. And then the willingness to ask others for input and for help. That's why SCORE is here. Um, one of the things that we always say is you shouldn't have to do this and go it alone. That you know you've got you've got people that are going to help with that. Not only score, but you know we'll talk about this in a minute. You should have a team. You should have uh, a mentor from score. You should have a banker. You should have an accountant. You should have an attorney, and you should have people that you can turn to and ask for help. Adequate capital is going to be very important. Um, it's not easy to get business funding for startups. We'll talk about that as we go through the weeks. Um, and this is a list that I'm just gonna set here for about 10 seconds and, uh, and go on to the next part of this. So having a supportive family is very, very important. Um, so, you know, having your plan and figuring out what if any exiting that you're going to do with a job that you currently have, it's gonna be really tough. So what if you can't afford a lawyer? Um, um, I would, th there, are, there are law clinics available that are inexpensive. Um, that's one possibility. There are also law clinics available based on your income level that potentially could be free. Um, and over the weeks, we'll discuss those. Um, legal, legal aid is one. Um, I know that um, Akron University and a couple of the other law schools have low cost um, uh, legal help and uh, even through the bar association itself. So, you know, I mentioned you're gonna be wearing all, all the hats when you start up. These are many of the hats right here and you, you will be all of that. Um, so uh, Ray, thank you for joining us. I'll see you in a couple of weeks um, and uh, we, we appreciate you being here. Take care. Right, thanks, Bob. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let's know your options. So, you know, there are several ways to, to get into business. And these aren't the only ones, but these are the ones that are probably the most common. Um, so starting a new business from scratch. 
And these are by no means all the advantages and all the disadvantages of doing that, okay? But I just wanted to kind of give you the 40,000 foot view on these. Um, you know, one thing is that you're not hampered by previous image or technologies or skeletons in the closet when you start your own business from scratch. You've got all the freedom to do it the way you want to do it. Obviously, you've got to do it right or it may not make it. Um, but, you know, you can choose your location. You can choose the name, you, you know, the branding, the, how you market, all those things. You can choose those yourself. Um, you can explore what market you want. You can set your own direction. You know, you can, you can um, watch how your dream comes true. That's, you know, again, very simple. I'm giving you a, a high-level overview. Some of the disadvantages is that you've got no business history. So if you're going out and you're looking for funding and you're starting something from scratch and you can't go to a bank or a lender or a partner and show them based on history, this is the numbers that I can expect. These are the sales I can expect. These are the costs I can expect. It's hard to come up with those. Now, there are ways to do that. Um, and there are comparisons that you can make to other companies that are out there that are like yours. And those are the kinds of things that you would do in your business plan going forward. And again, being able to use the library's resources, even to pull those together, the library, the internet, um, other sources where you can look at your competitors and see how they're doing. Um, the, the, the uh, databases at the library would have some exact numbers based on sizes of companies. There's several um, uh, databases out there that you can use for research to understand what the business possibilities are for the business that you're starting. So, but you've got no track record. So financing is gonna be very difficult, you know, and if you don't do it right, you can watch, you know, your, your dream become the nightmare. Um, you know, having startup funds, um, having, you know, uh, thing, money that you've saved up, having uh, collateral or equity um, that you can put forward is always gonna be helpful. So when you start a new business, those are the things that you want to consider. <clears throat> and what I would argue here is that if you have any thoughts of doing any of those, again, work with a SCORE mentor. Let's look at what you need in order to get yourself started, to put together your business plan. You'll see how Anne did hers. And she started from scratch. And you'll see how she did that when you start reading about Anne's nursery. So buying the business, okay? Um, there are some advantages and disadvantages there as well. Um, established clientele, potentially, you know, might have a, a brick and mortar location, or it might be a website, or it might be, you know, other things like that. You may actually, the business may have suppliers already, may even have a, a, a financial track record, may have a, you know, a known brand um, and a formula that's working, and you can go in there and buy that, potentially hit the ground running. Um, and, you know, you can review the company's records. So, you, you know, you'll take a look at their books. You um, can work with an accountant here to make sure that what you're looking at is on the up and up. And um, it might be a little bit easier to obtain financing if you're walking into a situation where you've got a profitable company that you're buying into or a company that's on the verge of profit or a company that has had a successful history. So those are things to think about when you consider buying a business that's already started and out there. The other thing is with some of those businesses, if you're buying something that is um, with a, a, a person that is retiring and wants out of their business, there's some advantages there in that they may actually even help to finance that business. So let's continue on and talk about some of the disadvantages. Um, there may be some hidden issues, some skeletons in the closet that you don't know about that may not come out when you do your due diligence. And again, if you're going to do due diligence, you want an attorney and an accountant to take a look at what is available and to you know, ask or demand for records that you need in order to make the decision. Um, Hidden issues, like I said, poor debt, poor reputation. The last thing you want to do is, is you know, buy a company that you know 
you go on um, and take a look at, at surveys and things like that, and everybody hates them. Um, it's hard to overcome that. You know, I'm being pretty pretty blunt in in um, you know uh, probably sim oversimplifying it, but you know it's hard to overcome. Um, you know, you need to understand equipment and inventory and things that are available to you to make sure that you've got the latest, greatest, best stuff that's available. So there is no guarantee that your success will continue. But if you're um, working well, again, work with a SCORE mentor on some of this stuff, we can help you um, to evaluate businesses that might be available for sale as well. Uh, buying a franchise, I mentioned that quickly because there are a few franchises out there that don't require a lot of experience for you to become successful at it, and they will actually teach you the business side of it, okay? So um, there are both advantages and disadvantages in, in um, buying a franchise as well. So, um, you know, there are a lot of franchises franchises out there and so for all intents and purposes a franchise is a, an organization that somebody has started they may have two three four restaurants it might be a cleaning organization it might be a painting organization it might even be something like um you know a power washing or something like that um and 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 they started it and they are now selling that formula to other people that's kind of what a franchise is but with a franchise, generally, um, you know, the, if, if the company has been successful, they will have a bit of an image, you know, um, if it's brand new and it's a startup, it may not. But, you know, think about franchises like McDonald's or uh, franchises like some of the restaurants that are out there um, and people buy into those franchises and are, for all intents and purposes, walking into a formula that's already up and running up to including finance. Now, in many cases, in order to get into a franchise, you've got to have a certain amount of wealth, um, personal wealth, in order to do that. But there are some franchises that are out there that don't require heavy, heavy, heavy wealth in order to get started in them. But what you do want to do is make sure that you are, you know, really working with a professional organization. And there's there's a couple of really good franchise brokers out there. They work kind of like real estate brokers where they represent the actual franchise, but the good ones will vet the franchises that they work with. They won't work with every franchise. It might be you know, a, a total of two or 300 franchises out of thousands that they work with. And generally a good franchise broker, again, if they're re reputable and there are some out there we can help you with, um, we would have a handle on what it costs to get started and um, what kind of wealth you might need in order to make it work, which ones are least expensive, what the success rates are, failure rates and things like that. So, um, you know, along with the franchises generally comes training, um, generally con continued, um, uh, you know, consulting and work working relationships with them. Um, and you have the ability to access, access other French franchisees People that um, are, you know, buying franchises. <clears throat> Couple disadvantages, you know, um, you you potentially could lose some of the control. You don't necessarily have all the say or a lot of say in what the products are, how they work, you know, and and things like that. There are franchise fees, um, generally right off the top. So if your revenue is a hundred thousand and it's a ten percent franchise fee, um, you're paying them ten thousand dollars. That's you know right off the top. And it's whether you make profit or not. And then there are other royalties that go along with franchises. There might be marketing fees and things like that. And you need to go in their eyes wide open before you make a decision. Um, there may be operational boundaries and that geographically you can only go so far. That's part of what you sign off on. Sometimes, you know, if you're buying a restaurant, you need to buy a territory. You know, so those are things to think about. Um, there are binding contracts that you need to live with. Um, there, you know, the, the problems that the franchisor, the person that puts together the franchise um, group, has are your problems as well. You know, so if you know it's a restaurant and they're having um, health issues, um, that's you know that's on you as well. So that's how some of those work. So, you know, there's good and bad. You need to you need to weigh them. You need to weigh them carefully. You need to weigh them with people that have experience in those areas that can help you do that. So 
Um, home-based businesses, I'm not going to talk very much about that. Um, home-based businesses in a lot of cases are, you know, easily gotten into. Um, that's one of the nice things about it. Uh, it's convenient, might be less expensive to get going. You've got flexible schedules. You know, you can do a, um, some home-based businesses as a side hustle, which, you know, might just add to your income and not necessarily do it on a full-time basis. Or you can start on the part-time basis and build it into a, a full-time business as well. Um, so it, it could be web-based and things like that. We'll talk about that as we go along. Um, disadvantages are, you know, if you're working in your home and, and, and the zoning is not specific to what you're trying to do, um, you're a little bit isolated in many cases. Um, financing is difficult to get because you really don't own equipment or anything that you could put up for as equity unless it's your own money. And certainly family distractions. Everybody that's working from home right now knows that if you're sitting in your home office and trying to work with, you know, um, virtually with people that it's difficult if you got kids knocking on the door, sitting on your lap or whatever it is. And then certainly the IRS is gonna look at what you're doing and how you're doing it, to, you know, so you need to make sure that you fall within those. So I'm not gonna spend any more time on that, but I do wanna talk about the difference very briefly between nonprofit and for-profit businesses. And one of the things that SCORE does very well, and there may be people here that are thinking about starting nonprofits is that we do have a component of SCORE mentors that are very specific to nonprofits. Um, um, Anita on this call um, and Dan both uh, have some specialty areas within nonprofits. And either one of you, if you decide you want to chime in on this, feel free. But I'm going to go through some very, very quickly some of the advantages and disadvantages. So the different, one of the differences between a nonprofit and a for-profit business is that the money that comes into a for-profit business can be distributed more or less almost any way that the owners decide fit, okay? It's different if you're a publicly traded company that there's some differences there. But, but besides that, money comes in, it, it, you know, depending on how you're set up, it goes into your pocket. It could be distributed however you decide you want it. You could take it all at the end of the year. You could pay yourself a salary, blah, blah, blah. With a nonprofit, um, the money that comes into a nonprofit, and it could be through funding, it could be through, you know, um, fundraising, it could be through projects, it could be even through charging for what you do, that money stays in the nonprofit. The difference, another difference between profits and, and, and nonprofits is that a nonprofit business is mission driven. It's, it's there for a reason. It's there to help this area or that area. It's, you know, to grow this or that. And everything that you do is based on that mission. I told you what SCORE's mission was to foster small, uh, vibrant small business communities. That's our mission. We are a nonprofit organization, or in, in, in uh, different terms, called a 501c3, which is, is um, IRS speak. But the money that comes into SCORE, whether it's at the national level or we raise funding locally, stays in SCORE, and it all has to be used to accomplish our mission. Now, in our case, we only have one part-time staff person, so it helps to pay that, but it can also pay staff. So if you're the managing director and you've got other staff on board, you can use that money to pay them and you can pay them a fair salary or, or, or wage. So that's, that's possible. So um, that's kind of the, the overall big differences. And we'll talk about those two, I think, as we go along. But I do want to let you know that if you go on to our website and you want to learn more about nonprofits, there's a lot of information out there. And we do nonprofit webinars just like this that are very much geared towards starting and running and operating and even getting funding for nonprofits. And uh, Anita and Dan have been putting those together very successfully. And we actually get quite a few people um, that, that come to these um, every time we do them. So they're very successful. And, and, and uh, we've got many, many nonprofits, probably, I'm just going to guess, 25 to 30 percent of the, of the companies that we work with are nonprofits. Anyway, um, so a nonprofit allows for operations for nonprofit status. So there are no owners, but you do have to have a board 
And if you are the managing director, even if you're the person that started it and is operating it and running it, the board has authority over everything that you do up to and including hiring and firing of you. And so that's something you want to consider before you do that. But again, if you have a very strong mission-driven idea, then a nonprofit is a very, very good way to go. Um, you may qualify for government or foundation grants. Um, they don't come easy. And it takes sometimes a year or two in business before you start getting those. But you can also do other kinds of fundraising. And um, we, we won't talk about it in these sessions, but I just wanted to bring that up. You can pay salaries, as, as I mentioned, um, to employees um, for consulting or contracting, however you want to do it. Disadvantages is that the focus is on a charitable purpose and it, you, know, you, you cannot profit from that so that people can actually split the profit or the company gets the profit. In a, non, in a nonprofit, it doesn't work that way. And if you end up going out of business, you've got to give it to another nonprofit. You can't profit from the money that's left over. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, I'll take questions later, I think, if we have any. Um, and that's kind of nonprofit. Online businesses, you all know pretty much about that. Um, it's a lower startup cost. And, and one of the things I talk about is barriers to entry. The higher the barrier to entry, the fewer competitors you're going to have. The lower barrier to entry, the higher, uh, the more competitors that you're going to have. So um, online businesses are pretty easy to get into. So you're going to have a lot of competitors. And uh, what's difficult about an online business is getting to a point where it's actually getting um, if it, let's say it's a website, getting people to the website, getting people to, you know, look at and buy and shop. That's the difficult part. That's where, you know, you need some marketing help. So that's not easy, but the advantages are lower startup costs. You can reach, you know, national, international, local, however you want to do it. If you're working online, um, you can work within your own convenience and accessibility for the most part, uh, especially if you're doing it as a side hustle. Um, you know, or if you've got automated systems, that type of thing. Flexibility is there. You know, it's not always good to be flexible with a lot of stuff. Um, but I do know some people that have made reasonable money um, as a side hustle with, you know, various kinds of um, online businesses. Um, low conversion rates. So I, I mentioned that it, it, that's a difficulty. It's, it's hard to get people to come to your website. And it's even harder to get them to go from your website to buying something. Um, um, and there's, there's, you know, all kinds of um, um, marketing um, instruments behind doing that, metrics and how you measure it, how you get people there. And, you know, marketing is a really heavy aspect of how you do this. I mentioned low barrier to entry. Um, you know, um, if, if, if a visitor comes and you're not meeting their expectation immediately, they're gone and you may never get them back again. And there's no per personal um, contact in many cases. All right, so those are some of the types of businesses that you could get into. Now let's talk a little bit about the actual legal aspects of that. I'm trying to watch the time. I wanna try and get us done by noon so that we can take more Q and A and people can start to leave as they need to. Um, so making it legal. There are several different ways that you can structure your business, sole proprietorship, um, partnership, limited liability company, uh, a C corp, um, S corp, and so on. But if you go to, I, I would just go to Ohio.gov, start up, start a business, and there's a really nice PDF that's available. Right, you know, when you hit start a business, it'll bring it up, and it will show you the various um, legal structures of business and talk about them in more detail than I'm about to give you. But I just wanted to give you that. So when you're starting a business, it's important in my mind to make it legal, to get it started, to set it up right from the very, very beginning. You know, depending on what your idea is, if you're looking to grow that business, then you want that business to start up properly so that if and when you scale that business, you're not going back to square one that, that happened two, three years ago and trying to recreate that business because that won't work too well. But if you do this right, right from the beginning, 
Um, and there are some resources here. Everybody here will get a copy of the slides in this recording and you can go online and I think these links will be live. Um, and so um, there is a handout on legal forms of business that should have gone out with the handout material that you got today or yesterday. And if, uh, if you need it from me and you send me an email, I'll make sure one way or another in the next couple of days that you, you get these. So sole proprietorship basically is exactly that. You decide you're a business and uh, you come up with a name, um, you come up with a website and you are a sole proprietor. The disadvantages of that is that anything that you bring in from a, um, a revenue perspective is your personal income. So there are tax implications on that. And uh, as you read through the resource material, you'll see that you know many people do do sole proprietors, but um, not as many as you might think. Um, and if you do a sole proprietor, um, you may have to fill out other forms on your taxes that show you as um, in business um, and self-employed. Uh, so the, there's some tax implications there, which I'm not going to get into in any detail here. Uh, you can work with your SCORE mentor or you can get to an attorney. There's a lot of information out there on the website, uh, on the internet, on um, legal forms of business, as well as go to, if you go to ohio.gov and you go to a government site like that, you're better off than going to a .com because there are legal um, companies out there, dot coms, um, that are going to look for money from you one way or another, whereas uh, uh, a dot gov or a dot org won't necessarily be um, looking for money out of you. Um, partnerships are similar in nature. Um, it could be a partnership of two people that get together and talk about you know, starting a business and, you know, it's the same as a sole proprietorship, only two business people instead of um, one. And so, um, you know, that's another way to go. It's not necessarily the most advantageous ways. One of the things that is of concern when you're a sole proprietor is that if there's a lawsuit, they're coming after you directly. Whereas other forms of businesses, they're coming after the company and not you personally. Okay. Now, there are ways to, pers to, to pierce that company, but you are much more, you're much better protected if you go to like a limited liability company or any of the corporations that are listed here as well. And when you read about the um, legal structures, um, either in the material I sent you or you go to one of the websites that we just talked about, um, you will find that, you know, they, they, they talk more about the things that are, are, are uh, you're liable for. So, you know, if, if, if you um, are being sued by somebody because your company owes them money, they won't necessarily be able to pierce your legal um, uh, liability company um, as, as easily as they could a sole proprietor because they're suing you directly as opposed to the company. Uh, C corporation, you know, some of your very, very largest corporations, public corporations are C corporations. Um, there's a different set of rules, how those work and, and what they do and who's on your board and all those other things. Um, for most small businesses, I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, and it's, um, it's rare that we, we work with C-Corps, but they're out there. And, and, you know, again, your very largest businesses that are out there are basically C-Corps and most public companies. Although there are public companies that are, are also LLCs as well. And an S-Corp is just a sub-chapter of your, your C-Corporation. So if you have an S-Corp, that means that, um, that the revenue aspect, the money that comes in and goes out of your corporation flows through you directly. There are advantages and disadvantages. I would not um, recommend doing any of this without having um, talked to a, um, an attorney or a tax accountant. But um, I, I would recommend that you could do sole proprietorship, uh, partnership, uh, limited liability corporation or company, and there are legal liability um, uh, partnerships that are out there as well. Um, and or if you are planning to do a nonprofit, um, there is an entity on the state's website for you to register your nonprofit. And then um, you would 
after you register in Ohio, you would have to go out and register um, with the federal government. So I'm gonna move on from here so that we can get to the, to the rest of this very quickly. Um, <clears throat> I've already talked about this. Let's talk about some other key considerations, you know, um, property liability, motor vehicle, umbrella liability. So insurance is very important as you grow your business. Um, and, um, you know, it doesn't take, it doesn't cost much to sit down with an insurance broker to talk to them about having the um, insurance policies that will help cover your businesses. And so that's very important. And as you grow your business, again, as I said, you start out right in the beginning and you grow it and you scale it. You've got something that's scalable if you've already begun thinking through these aspects. Um, you won't see a lot of this in your business plans, um, but, but this is still something that you want to talk about. Um, you know, government regulations, if you are in the process of doing, you know, several different things, you're going to have to understand what licensing and liabilities and government regulations are concerning the businesses that you're getting into. So, um, you know, for, for instance, um, if you are working with, uh, let's say, um, drug addiction help, either in a profit or for or nonprofit, you're going to have to be certified in what you do. So, you know, you go into a restaurant, you've got licensing, it's going to be um, state licensing, likely local licensing, um, potentially, you know, county licensing and things like that, that you need to deal with. We can, we can help you through looking those up. Um, labor laws are going to be very important. Um, the state of Ohio is a wonderful um, labor department that will actually help you walk through those um, uh, things that you need for your labor laws. Um, immigration, if you're hiring people that are, are not necessarily um, naturalized citizens. Um, and then IRS and you know other kinds of things that you need to look at in terms of withholding. And as you begin thinking through your finances, um, a lot of this stuff is gonna come into play in your financing. And you'll see as you get into the fourth session that shows you I mentioned this before, um, I, I can't stress enough, a banker. Let me tell you why a banker is important, even if you are not yet in business. Um, if you begin a relationship with a banker and you start walking through the things that you're about to do and you get bank advice, you get them to help you set up your accounts. And I always recommend that you keep your business account and your personal accounts 100% totally separate. Your bankers can help you do that. And as you grow and you might consider going for funding, you want to be able to talk to that banker. And good bankers are not going to be, you know, Debbie Downers on this stuff. What they're going to be is um, supportive. Um, and another example is that when you think about what happened between the uh, PPP loans and the EIDL loans, so, you know, payroll protection plans and um, the um, EIDL loans that were out there, having a banker as part of your relationships is, has helped many, many people that ordinarily might not have gotten through to get their loans. And if you take a look at, at some of the organizations that went out there and made and, and applied for those loans and didn't get anywhere, uh, chances are they didn't have a banking relationship. And it's unfortunate that that's the case. And sometimes it's tough to get the right banking relationships. Um, but, you know, bankers are more and more interested now in getting relationships with small emerging businesses than they ever have been in the past. So um, something to consider as, as you go through. I mentioned lawyers, I mentioned accountants, insurance agents, and certainly uh, SCORE as mentors. So these are all um, important aspects. Let's talk very briefly about funding and cash management. Again, this is an overview meant to be just that. We will get into much more detail in the last two sessions and particularly in the very last session on that. But the things that you wanna consider going into beginning your business um, is what it's gonna cost you to live, assuming that you're getting ready to go full-time or if you are in, in the process of building something part-time that goes full-time, um, you know, what can you cut back in your life? What, what is your outstanding personal debt? One of the things that getting funding is going to totally rely on, that is your credit card, your credit score. Um, and we'll talk about that in the last one. That's very important. 
So if you don't have a good credit score, then I would say start mending that if you're planning to get into business. And there are ways to do that as well. You know, how much money you've got saved up? You know, can you live in the next 16, six months to, this says 12 months. Um, I'd look even further out because if you're planning your business properly, you're not necessarily going to make money from day one. You could, but you may not. You may not make money till 12th month or 15th month or 18th month. You need to be able to live and you need to be able to spend money to get your business up and running in those in that time frame. Things that you want to think about as you begin building your business, and you'll see what Anne has done for her business, is what tools and equipment, what improvements that you might need to make to your space, assuming you've got space, what licensing and permits, personal fees, you know, inventory, um, and what do you need in terms of working capital in order to, to, to you know, either pay back loans or to pay payroll or to pay yourself or to buy um, materials that you need to actually uh, set up and operate your business. Things that you want to consider in terms of operating cash are salaries, rent, insurance, you know, taxes, advertising, um, loans, interest in, in principle. So if you're taking a loan out, your banker wants to know not only can you pay that loan back, but you can pay it back with the interest that's there and still make money. They don't want you to go broke. They really don't. Um, things like utilities and maintenance. So there's a whole list of startup costs and things that you will need to consider. And again, if you're bootstrapping it, it looks one way. If you're doing it part-time, it looks a different way. If you're starting out with a full, you know, full-blown idea of how you want to do your business, the financial parts, parts of that are going to look um, differently as well. And we have, we have tools in particularly <clears throat> um, spreadsheets and templates that you can use that actually outline all of these things that you can actually drop dollar amounts into and will calculate what your final costs are, what your profitability and, and those kinds of things are. And that's going to actually be shown in session work. Um, Things that you want to consider in terms of that is, is I'm not going to go into, into uh, what is equity and what is debt all that much, but it's something that you're going to want to consider. They will talk about that in detail in, in the fourth and fifth session. But equity is your savings. It's money that you own. It's money that comes from family and friends that is not encumbered by a repayment. Um, it's contributions that your partners make that are, they're not necessarily expecting the money back. Uh, so that there is, it's not encumbered um, by the company. Um, and it's, it's profits that you retain. You, let's say you, you're profitable in, in year one, you put that back into the business, that's equity. And the majority of loans that are out there for funding that you get are gonna require a 10% equity or 20% equity. Um, and you know how you raise that money and what that equity means, we'll talk about down the road. Um, debts are things like, you know, um, banks and credit cards and credit unions that you're borrowing from, that's debt. And that money is certainly usable in your company, um, but that's not equity. That's money that your company owes and has to pay back. Um, you know, micro loans, there are plenty of great micro lenders out there, uh, ECDI, um, Urban League, and um, there's some county micro loans that are available out there, which we'll talk about in the last session. And, um, those are, you know, low payments, um, low amounts of loans. There's an organization called the Hebrew Free Loan Association, and it's exactly what it is. It's there's small amounts, I think, you know, five to fifty thousand um, dollars, but there, but there are no, um, there's no um, return rate on those. And but they're, you know, and then there are low cost loans. This one, much of, of, of Hebrew, um, HFLA, Hebrew Free Loan Association, is free. Uh, we'll talk about those in the last session. Um, you know, revolving loans, supplier financing, uh, factoring. We'll talk a little bit about crowdfunding in the, in the last portion of it. But this is all debt. This is all money in one way or another you are going to be paying back. Um, and so um, what you really want to be working with is equity to the best of your potential. Once your business is up and running and you need to get a line of credit, then, you know, that's by all means is a great way to go because that helps cover your bills while you're building cash flow. And they will talk a little bit about cash flow in the last session. 
Um, I mentioned lenders, and, and I'm not going to go into any detail here because this will be covered in detail in the last. Uh, your personal credit scores, financial history, uh, your, your, your business plan, your ability to generate income, um, your knowledge of the business, those are all things that lenders are going to be looking for, in fact, if you are looking for money going forward. Uh, cash is the most important aspect of what you have. We'll talk about cash flow, which is the amount of cash that comes in in a given period of time and the amount that goes out and then what's left over. And sometimes you'll have a great month, but your costs are higher than you, know, you expected. So your cash flow could be negative in any given month. So watching your cash flow, understanding your cash flow, planning in advance for your cash flow is a good way to manage your business. That'll be talked about in the last couple sessions and you can work directly with SCORE Mentor on that or if you want to go to the SCORE website and understand cash flow, we just go in there and put it in as a keyword cash flow and it'll come up with multiple, multiple um, uh, things that you can use um, to understand cash flow. Anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go through where it, we're at 102, I'm gonna go through some business plan basics in about three minutes. And then that business plan will be something that we talk about in the next couple, three sessions. Um, it, it, there's a lot of reasons to have a business plan and we'll talk about that when we talk about Ann's nursery, uh, but it's really, a, it's a foundation for your business. And putting together your business plan and working understanding your competitors and working to get information through the library and articulating your business is going to be the most important aspect of putting your business plan together other than the financial side of it. So, um, you know, there are a lot of ways to do a business plan. There's a startup roadmap on the SCORE website. I would implore you to go to that. Um, there's also a business plan template on the SCORE website that's actually fillable that you can use and we can talk about and you can work with your mentor on it. But here's kind of an overall description of what's in it. Um, and, and these are the things that you want to start considering as you begin reading through Anne's nursery and how she did what she did. Um, there, you'll see she's got a little bit of an executive summary there. Um, there's a, a description of her company, her, her services and her products. Her marketing plan is in there. We'll talk about that in the third session. Her operational plan, those are all parts of what you need to understand to get your business up and running. And then your management and its organization. You know, what does that look like? What does it look like in the first month? What does that look like in year three? Um, and everything that we do in terms of business plan, we're going to think through the next three years. Expenses and capitalization. What do you need to get started? How are you going to get there? What does your financial plan look like? Those are some of the things that I showed you. What's your rent? What's your inventory? All those things. And the fourth session is going to go through this in a fair amount of detail. Appendixes or appendices here are just um, add-ons that you want to throw in there to, you know, utilize that. But the people that use this business plan are going to be you because it's your roadmap. And what's nice about it, it's gonna make you think through what you need in order to get your business up and running. So, um, you know, um, you're gonna think about who needs what you need, what, what, what you're offering, um, what differentiates you. And, you know, we're gonna talk about marketing in the third session. So I don't wanna go into any detail here. And then, um, you know, part of your marketing is how you're positioning yourself. And we'll talk about that going forward. Competition, competition, competition. I said that three times because that's gonna be one of the most important things that you do is understanding anybody else that's in business or has an idea that's even closely remotely similar to what you're trying to do. And then um, we'll talk about branding, price strategies. Um, I don't wanna go into that in any discussion right now but that's part of what you need to think through. And that's part of what your mentors will help you with. And that's some of what we'll talk a little bit about in the, in the next couple of sessions, where your sales are coming from. And then um, I've given you a readiness self-assessment tool that if you wanna take and fill it out on your own, um, I think that if you do it tomorrow, it's gonna to be different than if you do it five weeks from now. So you might wanna just at least take a look at that and consider it. 
So next week, we're going to be talking about business concepts. And, you know, the idea is to get to a no-go or a go decision um, and then begin working with your mentor um, on, you know, adjustments, changes, fixes, things that you might want to consider. We'll actually get to the point where you can start putting together the germination of your idea. So go ahead and review Anne's nursery. Um, take a look at the business readiness assessment. Look at the legal forms of business, which you should all have. If not, we'll make sure that you get them. And then next week, business concepts. There will be several handouts, I think six or seven handouts that go along with that, that will help you to start articulating how your business is gonna look and work. Um, and at that, um, I think that we're pretty much done for the day and um, I'm going to stop sharing and, and open it up. Uh, we've dropped off about 10 people from where we were and I understand if you need to get off, but I also, if you want to stay on and ask questions, I'm very happy to chat. So just, if you have anything, put it in the chat. Um, my email, if you need to get a hold of me, is robert.cohen at scorevolunteer.org. Um, how do I speed up the process of getting a SCORE mentor? If you go to the website, as I mentioned, you should be hearing from a SCORE mentor within about 48 hours. Unless it's a weekend, it might be as much as 72. But in general, they will assign you a mentor. Uh, right away and you say that you've made several requests would you kindly send me a note and i'll follow up um on that so robert.cohen at scorevolunteer.org and i apologize in advance sometimes we do uh, step out of line and i'll be sure to smack whoever it was that should have called you Um, the handouts already went out in, um, in one of the reminders that went out. Now, that said, if you send me your, your email address to tell me that you need them, I will make sure you get them. Um, it's, it's really hard because sometimes people will register or jump on this call after the fact. And so um, you may not have gotten them or you may not have gone through your email or you may not have gone through, it may have gone out in the text, I don't recall. Um, so that's that's a possibility. So um, yeah. So um, any any other questions? Somebody's already started their business. Um, it's very early stage, and they need help figuring out the tax information and you know information uh, about you know a transient vendor business. Um, I, you know what I would do is I, I would put first of all score is not allowed to, to give you legal advice specifically or tax advice. We're, even though we've got, we've got accountants on, 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 on our mentoring list, um, you know, they're, they're not practicing accountants necessarily, or if they are, they, they should not be giving you information. But they can lead you in the right direction. Um, same thing on, on the legal side as well. Um, for vendor licenses, but most of the vendor licenses that, that you might need should be available on Ohio.gov and then, um, you know, start a business uh, in, in uh, Ohio. Um, should be able to help you with that. If not, um, I, I can probably send you some other links that'll work for you as well. Um, let me see if I have any other, any questions. I have four in the Q&A, I think. We got to that, and let me see if I have anything else in the chat. Um, I will put my contact information in the chat. So uh, let, let me do that right now. Um, bear with me a minute. Let me take this off. I'm not sharing anymore. 
Um, I'm just trying to get to my chat. That's the problem. Ah, here we go. Um, okay, so my my uh, contact information is in the chat, and uh, I'll try and you know over the next day or so monitor it and uh, see what else we can come up with. Um, did I miss anybody? I think I covered everything. So if there are no questions, then I would say let's call it a day. Thanks everybody for joining us and.